Hello and welcome to another Slippy Limpets video. Now, last week's video was all about exploring new marks on the Isle of Skye, trying to find some, some bigger fish, or any fish really, but ideally big ones. Cracking day, really good sort of uh, adventure. Um, today's video is slightly different. We're going to go to uh, Proven Mark and um, hopefully get into some fish. Just like every video, I guess. Conditions wise, we've got strong southwesterly winds, which I'm hoping are going to be on my back. It's a bit of a gamble. It's kind of maybe one or two degrees too close for comfort, but we'll give it a go. I might even take the LRF rod down, but um, I will get down there and see what it's like. <laughs> Well, there's a multitude of ways down here. I'm taking the easiest route because the rock is like glass when it's wet. With all this lichen and it's, as you can see, pretty wet. I was worried about the wind and the swell when I came around the corner, but that couple of degrees I was talking about it looks totally manageable. There's barely a breath down here, so uh, aye, right. happy days, let's get on it. I think I've got a bit of colour in the water, but not too bad. I think what I might do is I might start down there and fish with the LRF, see how that goes. Well, typically it's just started chucking it down, so um, I'm going to be on head cam only. I've just rigged up the LRF rod and we're going to see. Oh, fish on. Oh. <laughs> that was the first cast. It hasn't turned the power on yet. Can I keep it away from the snags? It's just a little in. <laughs> Go on up you get. Oh, it's woken up now. There we go. <laughs> well, I think that's bigger than everything I caught yesterday. Oh, it is by a long shot. <laughs> that was mint fun. Check it out! <laughs> well, there we go. That's a cracker on the LRF. <laughs> uh, about three and a half pounds. Go on, down you go, mate. Yes. <laughs> what a start. Well, <laughs> the weather's taken a real turn. So uh, I'm sorry if the audio has gone a bit funny. I bury the microphone in my uh, in my jacket. <laughs> so this setup, I don't think I even started talking about this setup. It's a uh, six foot two, two to fourteen gram uh, Abu Garcia Veritas Sensi S, which is a mouthful. Um, and then I've got a rockfish H two O rockfish. One and, a half, one and a half, well, one thousand size reel with four pound braid on, and I'm using ten pound fluorocarbon because I want to have it. If the fish goes to ground, I want to at least stand a chance of getting it out. Well, nothing on my second cast. 
Got a seven gram jig on. It's not weedless. And a three and a half inch shad. Oh, the rod is uh, it's fast action with a, a solid carbon tip, so bite detection is pretty good. But still, as you can see, it's got a little bit of backbone to it. Well, I hope that wasn't the cast of the first cast fish. I know I've just cast out again, but... Feels like a better one. <laughs> I think the trick with this is to get them as high, no, it's not, to go as high in the water column as possible and then play them at this edge here. Ah, it's smaller, it's about half the size. Oh no, out of that. There we go. Hey! Probably the same length, just not as fat. Nah. Lovely. Oh, sorry, mate. No, he's away. And I mentioned on my last video, I've got my custom towel as well, thanks to Stormtrooper Matt and his wife. Love it. Oh, that's better. Rain stopped and the sun's come out. tip bounce. So about an hour before low tide. Oh, this is a gunner. Oh no, it's not. Oh, that lure is wrecked. Time for another. You know, I don't really think it matters which lure we put on. Go for this lure boy, little three inch shard. I actually thought I'd have trouble hitting bottom, but the current in this place is normally so ferocious. Seems I'm doing all right at the minute. I'm in this eddy, like in this gully. It's cast on the edge of the current line. <laughs> Pings the lures out this thing. Got my drag as tight as I'm willing to go. Maybe go one click extra. Better. There we go. Well, I think they're progressively getting smaller, but it doesn't matter because they're still excellent fun. Oh, that 
was hooked nicely in the scissors. Oh, a nice entry as well. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this. Don't know what it is about the light gear, like, always like fishing with light stuff. Never one been one to bully the fish if I can't help it, but uh, yeah. I mean, if we get into a big one, it might be a little bit of a different story. There might be some swear words, but uh, it's a chance I'll take. Let's see if I can send this out into the mainstream. Nah, uh, seems as a maximum casting distance. Just put more power in there and it didn't really uh, go any much further. for the structure. Oh, you get. <laughs> if I can keep its head up, then I can stop it from diving. Really glad I brought this little thing. It's uh, looks like he's been caught before. These little ones are good fun. I mean, that's about two pounds there, eh? pound and a half, two pounds. I've actually got some scales. I might start measuring them so I'm not just throwing out uh, random weights. Oh, that was a better cast. Yeah, much further. Hopefully that's where the big girls live. Ooh. Oh, that one took miles out. What oh, feels better, this one? What a dive. <laughs> oh, it's still got some left, this, I think. No. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Keep your head up. Be happy with us on the big rod. Think I'm gonna get a quick weight on it. <laughs> Five pounds and four ounces with the weight with the net. And the net weighs one pound and 15 ounces. Sorry, 16 ounces in a pound. So let's say it's two pounds. So that was uh, 3.4 pounds. I've been carrying these lure boy lures around for us for ages. I've used them in freshwater for perch, but I have, don't think I've, oh yes. Used them for pollock. Yeah, obviously they're working quite well. And if you want to get your hands on them, just search for lure boy. And Boy, I'll leave a link in the description, but boy is B-O-I on Instagram. He makes them in uh, custom colours and things. Oh, 
coming rain again. Feels like my lures had a hit. I think it slid around the hook shaft. I feel a bit more resistance on. Didn't seem to matter. Oh, that took it really close. <laughs> and quickly as well. Thankfully, it's just a little in, else uh, could have been in some trouble there. There we go, pretty respectable on the weed kit. Well, that lure has seen better days, so I've put on my old faithful slider shad. Probably seen these before. Oh, yes, right out there. So that took, fish took a really quick retrieve as well. Which I'm surprised at. Currents just took that right round there. Oh. Not bad for four pound line. I was just thinking I'd done really well by not losing anything so far. Oh, I was just about to say I think the coolies are in, but that just <laughs> literally one little whip there and snapped us straight off. Ooh, I think there might be some big girls around in the uh, at low tide. Let's get the bigger rod out. All right, well, here we go. I've got my Century Graphics lure, uh, nine foot six, with Daiwa BG Mag, sorry, BG MQ, um, two and a half thousand size reel with 20 pound braid on and 20 pound leader. We put it on. 15 gram jig, I think this is a Berkeley Big Mouth or something like that. And then a Mardeal, Mardeal, Mardeal. Just super glued it on because this is seeing a bit of action. So while that's dry and I thought some people have asked us what this thing is that I've got around my waist. Well, this is a, a life vest, basically. It's just there, the pull cord. So I just need to pull around and then it flips out and it's a big inflatable ring. And then also the other thing I've started carrying recently, which is because I bought it to go with my boat as a PLB, or personal locator beacon. So all I do is whip this out, an aerial pops up, and then there's a button. Uh, I push that button. Basically, uh, a Mayday signal gets sent via GPS, and uh, that, my location, then gets sent to any local rescue teams, and um, they then know exactly where I am, and uh, can come and get us. I used to carry around a uh, radio, VHF, but I mean, it's got what, maximum of two kilometers. It felt good having it, but it wasn't exactly the most reliable piece of kit. And the phone's not very reliable either. So these PLBs are expensive, but um, I think it's well worth it. And it's good on the boat as well. Um, if I ever go overboard or I get my boat gets into trouble, then uh, I just do exactly the same. Boring, I know, but pretty uh pretty important i've fished for years doing this style of fishing by myself and probably a little bit gung-ho when i was younger but then you kind of get um yeah as you get older you get a little bit more sensible don't you so yeah that's what i've got for safety equipment Come on up, you get over that structure. Oh, it 
that's hanging on it. <laughs> it's not as big as I've had on some of the LRF, some of the fish I've had on the LRF kit. what I really like about this rod it kind of seems to uh, it's not bad it's probably the second biggest of the day it's got plenty of backbone I've caught some big fish with it just seems to kind of stiffen up the bigger the fish is so it's always really enjoyable to play a fish there we go yeah it's not the biggest of the day Well, that was on my second cast with that lure, and I, I don't know why, but I was starting to think all the fish have been on small lures. Putting this big thing on, is it a bad idea or what? Um, but obviously not, no. I got further, and that was caught much further out, so just hope it lasts long enough because it's, uh, it's my last, well, it's my last jig head. I've probably got one more of these lures, but it would be a um, second hand one. Literally just lifted up over a bit of structure there. Oh, and it's found some. Yeah, just lift a lure up over a bit of structure. I cast really far up. I'll start that again. I cast as far as I could and I got into the really deep water. Let my lure sink and there's obviously like a ledge in front of us here where this gully comes in and uh, the lure hit the deck and it, as I was bringing it back in I felt it hit a wall so I lifted up over the wall and the fish I guess is sitting on top of the flat bit on the corner of the wall and then it took it but uh, yeah then it's obviously another ledge behind that and it's gone straight into it can't feel it pulling Give it a few minutes. If it doesn't take any line, then it's uh, it's transferred us into the wall of some weed, and I'll have to yark it out. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get that out. Uh, yeah, uh, it snapped off. I gave it ten minutes, and nothing doing. So um, I had a little look around the corner. It's actually a really nice day. Sun's got some warmth to it, but unfortunately, the water is about six meters from the ledge, um, the fishing ledge. So. I wouldn't be able to lift anything out, so I'm just going to carry on fishing here. But what I'll do is I'll whack on uh, a metal. I'm in total shade here, aren't I? Whack on a metal and uh, see if I can catch something at distance. Ideally, I would have a single hook on, but I've run out. When I fished here last year, the metals, <laughs> soft plastics, outfished the metals uh, for the bigger fish by quite a long way. Even small soft plastics. And I think this is just proving my case. Smallest one of the day. One thing actually is I found these mustard, I like these kind of fast hatch lure clips. And I found these mustard ones with a ball um, ball bear and swivel so these really twist your braid up so having that swivel is uh, a really nice addition go on Well, I was trying to shake that loose in the water, but uh, it's not coming off. I have crushed the bar barbs on this, on these hooks. 
Another few more casts with this and if we keep getting shorts then uh, what I might do is stick a heavy weight on and a small lure just so I can get the distance see if there's a bigger fish out there that one that snapped us off ideally well I've had a few casts and nothing been cast the tide's going a current is well the tide is coming in now with that ledge that I was fishing off before is in the water but I've been the current is moving from left to right so I've been casting over there and by the time my lure hits the deck it's over there so uh, this time I've cast straight out that way I'm hoping there's a big eddy there so I'm hoping that uh, the lure comes round into the eddy and that's where the fish might be you always seem to be just on the edge of the current line. Close in. And a small one again. Gonna have to take this metal off. It's a little coolie. Definitely time to take the metal off. Metal's off. Uh, and I've found this. This is actually a 30 gram jig and another one of those mad eel crazy eels or mad eel mad eels. Now the mad eels are 14, 15 grams I think. So this is actually five grams over the casting weight of this rod. So never ever recommend doing this. Um, but I'm just gonna be really careful and let the bend of the rod cast it out. It might be too heavy given the depth of water, but it was there ready rigged up. So I thought I'd give it a go. Everything else is caught, um, so yeah, maybe hopefully this will as well. I've also not got very much time left on this little platform. Oof. Oh, that was a big hit from underneath that. The lure went really light. You can even see me. <laughs> oh, there's that ledge, damn it. Come on, off you get. Nah, nah. Gonna fish a bit lighter. I've got a Savage Gear V2 sand eel, I think. But that big fish seemed to be quite close in, so don't need to go too far with it. I'm going to try and target that area where I keep snagging up. Oh, definitely targeting the area. <laughs> I've run out of light jig heads. <clears throat> so I've got a, oh, it's upside down, a 20 gram uh, Cheb. And what I've done is I've put one of these mad eel, crazy eel, mad eel things onto a four row wide gape hook. Now these don't actually have a slit in the belly and I don't have anything sharp enough to make one. So it's not ideal because when a fish bites, there's not a huge opening there before the belly hits the bottom of the hook. But I think, I mean, these Gamakatsu hooks are nice and sharp. So hopefully, um, the fish bites with enough force, uh, it doesn't really matter, but we'll find out. I'm also now in the casting range of the rod as well, so I don't have to worry about damaging the rod in any way. Oh, hit instantly there. Just give it a little lift where that or where I assume that structure is. Well, I got over it for a change. Go, finally. 
Oh, it's off. I need a slit in the belly of this this lure. Well, it turns out these blunt <laughs> line scissors are doing the job. It's a bit rudiment, a bit agricultural. Much better. By the way, these ceramic scissors, brilliant. Nothing can rust on them. Harder than metal and, to, and they'll never lose the sharpness, apparently. And you can modify your lures with them. Getting pushed off this platform as well, so the beauty with the Cheb, Cheburuska, is that you can um, change your hooks and your lures dead easily and just keep the same weight. This is the lightest Cheb I've got, so what I'm doing is I've getting a two hook and I'm getting this little three and a half inch slider which we obviously caught fish on before. Now this does have a slit in the belly so it should help uh, increase the hookup rate although the sink rate will be quicker because the lure is much smaller and uh, the paddle tail is as well so sacrificing a little bit of water movement or action in the water but maybe increase the hookup and then that's it I just stick my lure clip on and there we go. Here we go. Whoa, this feels better. Whoa, away from that structure. Oh, damn you. That was so much further out. Oh, we got it. I'm hoping it's better after all this. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the heaviest of the day. Nailed it really far out. There we go. A bit smaller this time. Let's give it one more go. Seem to have found where they are. So so addictive when you get going on them. That one didn't know it was hooked there. Whoa. 
what a lunge. Fish isn't taking any line. Oh no, the little cheeky get transferred us. Whew. Forget about that hill on the way back. Especially when you're in a hurry to try and make a uh, um, dinner reservation. Dinner reservation makes it sound posh. Food in a pub. Um, what a canny little session. Three, three and a half hours of fishing. Um, obviously no monsters, but at this time of year I'll take it. Especially on the light kit. <laughs> I love, I couldn't stop giggling. It's, uh, it's brilliant watching that little, I don't even know what to call it, toothpick bending like that and then the, taking the drag. So uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Not a bad afternoon out. Um, lovely sunset going on, but I'm gonna have to shoot. So uh, really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, um, as always, leave, leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, a thumbs up and a subscribe would be good as well. Thanks very much for watching and as always, until the next one, tight lines.